I don't know if you really believe in a judgment day, but if there was a judgment day and you stand before God and give an account for your entire life, how do you think you would do? Hi, can I please get um, the $5 Whopper Junior Duo? You got it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Sure. No, no problem. Yep. All right. So I just bought some BK from my friend John, and I hope he likes it. So John, tell me a little bit about yourself. What's your story? Well, I've been living outside for the last three and a half years because uh, my disability check does not cover what local rents are around here. And even if it did, I'm not letting any landlord bankrupt me. At the end of 2024, I plan on moving to Arizona. Arizona. Ugh. Uh, what's the name of that state? Alabama. Georgia and Alabama, yeah. Alabama. Going down there, <laughs> the cost of living is a lot less, the weather is a lot better, and the women are better. <laughs> Do you mind me asking what happened that you ended up on the street? Coronavirus came around in about 2020 and destroyed the flea market industry, which was 75% of my income. Mm. The other 25% is a disability check. So basically mm. the whole country shut down for like two years. Now I might get back into it. I enjoy it. So you seem to be doing pretty well here. I mean, you're still getting pills that you need. You're, I know I offered to buy you some food, but you said you've been fed. And so you seem to be still been taken care of. Yeah, I guess the Lord has been good to me. Yeah. Everything is working. I wake up every morning. You cannot ask for anything more than waking up every morning, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. But what people in this country have to start getting in touch with is they got to start walking a little bit closer to God instead of doing all these riots in Chicago mm -hmm. and destroying Oakland, California, and Los Angeles and looting freight trains to get Amazon boxes and whatnot. You yeah. got to start walking closer to God. Yeah, absolutely. I, I absolutely agree with that. And it's amazing that to still have this attitude of gratefulness and, and gratitude, even amidst hardship, I mean, you just don't see that anymore. And I, I think that's a wonderful thing that you have. So I know you said you believe in God. Do you believe in an afterlife, in a heaven or a hell? Well, yeah, there probably is a heaven or a hell. Is there an afterlife? Yeah, most of us get reincarnated. What makes you believe in reincarnation? Because the soul never dies. The physical body dies, the heart dies, the lungs die. You have an aneurysm in your brain. Physically something dies, but your soul is just passed on to a different body in the afterworld or the afterlife. Do you believe in the Bible? Have you read the Bible? Uh, no, that's my only weak point. Unfortunately, okay. due to this turbulent lifestyle that I lead, all, all I know is I believe in God, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Like I told you, somebody must have made the sun, the moon, the stars, man and woman, and all the different types of animals. And yeah, I mean, yeah, there's, there's got to be a God somewhere. Otherwise, how did all this stuff get started? How did any of it... How do any of it exist? Absolutely. I couldn't agree more. I really couldn't. You see design everywhere and you look at a car, you look at a building, you know there is a, a builder or a designer behind that thing because of how spectacular it is and how well it works and all that stuff. It just, it's obvious. But you know, in the Bible it says that a lot of men suppress the truth in unrighteousness because they love their sin more than God and they don't want to submit to God because of that, because they love their sin more than they love God. When you die, I don't know if you really believe in a judgment day, but if there was a judgment day and you stand before God and give an account for your entire life, how do you think you would do? Well, considering all the unbelievable hardships and hassles that I've had in my life caused totally 99% by outside influences, mm -hmm. <laughs> any evil that I may have done in my life, the Lord would probably look the other way and say, John, 99% of your life was turbulent, 1% was pleasant, we'll let you up into heaven, you're not all that bad of a guy. Interesting. What if I told you that there's only one way to get into heaven? What would you think about that? Well, you could be right. Obviously, you know more about religion than I do. If you have a YouTube religion 
<laughs> themed uh, channel, YouTube thing. This, this is true. Can I tell you what the Bible says about the afterlife? Yeah, go ahead. So the Bible does talk about heaven and hell, not reincarnation, believe it or not. And there's only one way to get into heaven, and that's through faith in Jesus Christ. So the Bible has what is called the gospel, which is the good news, but then there's also bad news. So the bad news is we've all sinned and we've all fallen short of the glory of God, of God's standard. God is holy, he's righteous, he's just, and he's good. In a way, that's a really good thing, but since we're the ones that sinned against him, we're the criminals and we're the ones who need to be punished because of that. Jesus says to even look with lust upon a woman is to commit adultery with her in your heart. So imagine just, just looking at lust is, is to commit adultery. To hate someone in your heart is to commit murder in God's eyes. To curse at somebody, to just get angry with somebody is to commit murder. Oh because God's standard is so high. So because of that, we all fall short, you know? And even in the 10 Commandments, the Bible says, do not covet. Just just wanting something that's not yours is wrong. And that if we do that, we can't get into heaven because God's standard is perfection. It says in the Bible that one day, God will judge the world through the man, Christ Jesus, who was perfect. So do you know what God did for us so that we can be forgiven of our sins? Yeah, he died for our sins. That's right, yeah. So God sent his son Jesus into the world. He lived the perfect sinless life we never could. He never coveted. He never committed adultery. He never even looked with lust upon a woman. He never lied. He was perfect. He lived the perfect life that we need. And he was the only one who was able to die the death that we deserve in our place. And he rose from the grave three days later, defeating sin and death forever. And now the Bible talks about putting your faith in Christ and repenting of your sin. So it's turning your trust from yourself to him. If you believe that good news, if you believe it's true that he really came, really died, really rose from the grave, you will have eternal life with God forever. What do you think about that? I think it uh, makes a lot of sense. It's pretty good news, right? Yeah, because eventually we're all going to meet our maker. We're all going to be judged. Yep. It's just some of us have more evil than others. Some of us have less evil than others. Yeah. Me, I try to live a clean life. Yeah. I don't go to bars, I don't drink, I don't do drugs. Yeah. So that's the problem is whether it's a little bit of evil or a lot of bit of evil, it's still going to be judged, right? right and right. our good works, the Bible says, is never good enough. And that's why we have to trust in what Jesus did. He takes the entire punishment for us and he gives us the righteousness we could never have. So when you said before that you're going to um, when I said, why would God let you into heaven? And you said, well, like I had a really tough life and God knows that and that's why he'll let me in. And in a sense, that's you trusting in yourself. You're trusting in what's happening to you that's gonna get you into heaven. But God says the only way is through faith in Christ. It's, it's turning from yourself. It's turning from trusting in you to trusting in Christ. Does that make sense? Right, it makes sense, right. Okay. That's probably the way it'll work out in the end anyway. So I live in Poughkeepsie, New York, and we have a pretty decent homeless population here. And one thing I like to do is share the gospel with the homeless. And the way I like to do it is I offer them food. Uh, I don't like to give money to the homeless. I, I never know what they're gonna do with the money. Unfortunately, I have to think that way if they're gonna spend it on alcohol or drugs or something. So I, I like to offer to buy them food, fast food, whatever. So I'll buy them food and then I'll, I'll go give it to them and I'll say something usually along the lines of, I know I was able to bless you physically with food, but can I also bless you spiritually with a message from God? Then I usually go into sharing the gospel with them. And I wanted to record me doing this as a way to show people just another way to witness to the homeless and, and be able to reach out to them and show them God's love. Um, so when I met John and I asked him if I can buy him food, he initially said no, he just ate and, and he didn't want anything. So then we just kept talking and, and I asked him if I could still do an interview with him and he said yes. So it was really cool that I was still able to talk to him. And then afterward I was like, you sure you don't want anything? So then I ended up buying him some food. So that's how that happened. But um, hope this was a blessing to anyone who watches it.